Hier ist Dreieich aktuell kompakt. Ja, guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Wir haben heute ein, die Gelegenheit, einen Bildhauer aus Simbabwe zu interviewen, Mr. Itai Nyayama, der hier bei den Familien Sobol und Grabski ähm, sein deutsches oder dreieicher Atelier aufgeschlagen hat. Und er steht uns dankenswerterweise für ein Gespräch jetzt zur Verfügung. Welcome in Dreieich, Itai. Thank you very much and uh, uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, please, uh, can you tell us about your way from Zimbabwe to Dreieich? So how did you come here? What's, uh, uh, what's your uh, idea working here at Dreieich and so on? Yeah. Uh, Uh, at the beginning, it was more like uh, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, it was more like uh, an invitation from uh, Heike von Busikis or uh, with Christine uh, Dill. Yeah, the uh, two friends that uh, um, organized an exhibition uh, in the uh, uh, first stages, and then uh, uh, later on, then they, I was invited this year as well to uh, come and demonstrate and then show uh, the other works of, uh, from me. And uh, like as you see, much, much corner this one is got a lot of uh, sculptures from me as well to show and uh, presenting and then something to show something that is different from uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, rather than the Shona uh, uh, so names, so called sculptures. So it was uh, a privilege that I uh, encountered uh, to be invited uh, always uh, in summer to come and uh, show the new works and the, the progress from uh, the other stage to another stage. Uh, and then uh, this, this year, last year it was in uh, Ulversheim. And this year and, uh, we uh, managed to come to Dry Eich mm -hmm. by the invitation of uh, family Grabski and uh, family Sobro. Uh, to uh, pre uh, 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 to make a, a garden exhibition in the uh, in their beautiful garden, so that's uh, why I came to be here yes, in Dry Eye. We did just just did a movie about the uh, opening of the exhibition. Uh, now, uh, please uh, tell us a little bit about your development as a sculptor. Yeah, but it started in all in 2000 and uh, to uh, by when I met uh, the two uh, ladies uh, uh, Heike von Buskis was stay, staying in Zimbabwe and uh, Christine uh, Dill was uh, coming to and from uh, buying um, sculptures uh, for yeah, for exhibitions uh, in here in Germany then uh, she came to make a uh, an exhibition uh, uh, a web for web uh, competition for a young upcoming artist and uh, uh, young who wanted to develop their own uh, skills. So then, uh, so as I was uh, off from the school of uh, Joseph Mzondo, I started uh, uh, learning as a sculptor from Joseph Mzondo, one of the uh, renowned uh, artists from Zimbabwe. And uh, he, We worked together, uh, and I was assisting him for almost about uh, four years. Mm -hmm. It came to be that uh, he came one day and he wanted to make uh, to make uh, his car well or to repair, for repair to his car uh, to my brother, who is an auto electrician. Then I uh, wasn't with uh, any work uh, after school, and then I started uh, asking questions about, uh, can you have uh, help me with work? Then they said, no, okay, I will see about it. Then when he invited me to his workplace that I could start with him working, I discovered... So you became an assistant of uh, Joseph Mzondo? Yes, definitely. I became an assistant of Joseph Mzondo uh, from, uh, from, I think this was almost about 1995, uh, end of 1995 to the beginning of 1996. Then uh, still, since then, that, that's when I worked with him until 2004. And he was real a good teacher and uh, a real uh, strong artist, and uh, still to then he's uh, renowned. And uh, in 2000, that's uh, when I left him, uh, and I started to work on my own uh, in the same style that uh, you, you followed your teacher. More my style was linked to my teacher. And then there was a web for web with Christine in 2002, 
uh, and uh, for to find a real own style and uh, your own uh, way of uh, sculpting. So I, I didn't manage because my sculptures were very much linked to Joseph. Uh, so I didn't manage to uh, obtain a position in the uh, uh, sculpture competition. Then came 2004, uh, I became the second prize winner of uh, the same competition from Christine Deal. Uh, and then she that invited... Was in, in Germany or in Harare? That was in Harare. Uh, all these competitions were in Harare uh, since then to try and find uh, your own style. Uh -huh. Then I worked so hard in 2002, uh, 2004, then that's when I came to the second uh, uh, position. And uh, she, Christine invited me to uh, Bremen. That was the first mm -hmm. time then, then we met uh, 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 an exhibition, a group exhibition with a lot of artists included. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was much the center part of the uh, exhibition and it was uh, very much success, uh, such that she invited me again in 2006, uh, 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for 2006, it was uh, more uh, to, to go to uh, Billefield and then it was a success as well. And uh, in Steinfurt, in Münster, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, in Dingmenger Werk, was uh, another success. And then from there, then as I was invited in 2007. Then I did not manage to come because of the political uh, situation yeah. in Zimbabwe. Uh, it wasn't so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, uh, 2007, 2008, it was very much difficult, uh, no things in the northern food, uh, so I had to run about to, to try and find something for the family in the nearby countries. And uh, that came to 2008, whereby I had an opportunity again to be invited to Ulversheim, uh, nearby uh, mines. Yeah. And uh, I really, uh, it's Oppenheim, near Oppenheim and then nearby mines as well. Uh, then it then was a really uh, a good show. Uh, it was much with uh, Stein and wine, mm -hmm. uh, and then it was an exhibition that was uh, uh, a garden as well, a garden exhibition to showcase my sculptures and uh, the others uh, different sculptures like uh, right here in the uh, uh, dry ice. Mm -hmm. So uh, from there, I, I came again in 2009, uh, and then 2006 I was. Uh, invited for another Build Tower Symposium uh, in Urban Kirchen uh, by, uh, with a contact from Christian Dill. And uh, it was well, and then I, I made a piece that I called The Flow. And then 2009, was invited again for the second time to Urban, Urban Kirchen, whereby I, I did a piece that was called Growing Wings, Getting Wings. And then that was uh, much of a success. And then we went to, again to Biller Field and uh, in Billefield, uh, it was uh, uh, a group exhibition from Christian Deal, and it, uh, we had some workshop at the Fakhochschule, and it was a real a success as well. And then, since then, uh, I was I'm always invited, and then now I'm in Dry Ice. You have been adopted by Germany. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, I think more <laughs> yeah. of the exhibitions are coming uh, to Germany, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I'm very much uh, happy to be here in Dry Ice mm -hmm. to showcase uh, some of these sculptures and the, a big development uh, with the style that I call the open mind up to the uh, uh, stone folding, and uh, it always uh, it brought a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, art mm -hmm. from uh, for, from within me. And then the development, you can see it as, as you progress in the uh, uh, sculpture exhibition that is here in Dry Ice. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. Okay, we are happy too. And we now are surrounded by works done yeah. uh, during the years you worked here. Yeah. And it would be fun if you uh, may explain a little bit uh, the several uh, styles or sev the several steps of development yeah, yeah. Uh, showing, showed by uh, those. Uh, yeah. These objects uh, represent the, the, the development of your main idea as a, uh, as, as a sculptor. Is that right? Uh, yeah, some of them they, are, they they represent that, and some of them are much uh, much further uh, in the development. So I start from uh, this one, uh, which I called uh, the uh, "Open My Eye." This is uh, the head uh, from Opal, uh, Opalit, and then "Open My Eye." It opened my eye from the open mind. 
uh, the, the concept that I had that was from open mind, open mind to open eyes to see mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in the world of art, and then this is a concentrated uh, ahead and with an open eye, and uh, you take the vision with an open eye, and then it grows much stronger in the in the head. So this is uh, open um, open my eye. And then, this is near Shona art, isn't it? This is uh, close to Shona art mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the expressions, yes. and uh, uh, this is the first development. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the uh, first sculptures, uh, and then uh, some sculptures that were uh, uh, coming out when I left uh, Joseph uh, okay. for my own yeah. uh, uh, mm -hmm. upbringing and oh, trying to yes, find my own style. Then it's more abstract and then more uh, realism, and then it's more in the head, in the forms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then coming to the uh, Block vision, and then uh, in the uh, in the way whereby I was uh, uh, looking at the sculptures, I, I started developing a, uh, a feeling whereby sometimes you could not see so clear into these tones, and then you could not see something that is uh, it, it, from the development. You could not see uh, what what is in the stone, what is uh, coming out from the stone, and it, it was always blank. So this was uh, much of a block vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it is blocked vision. Then sometimes you can see, or sometimes you cannot. You, you cannot see. So it's from the other side, and it's uh, the, the the vision that uh, could you could see, but it's blocked. You cannot go mm -hmm. further yeah. inside yourself. Mm -hmm. It's blocked as well. So uh, this is uh, one of the pieces that uh, represent uh, my uh, early beginnings as well. Later on, then we went to uh, uh, the flowing vision. From the block from, vision, from the block vision yeah. to the flowing open, vision. open. yeah, block right. vision mm -hmm. and flowing vision. So in the flowing vision, it's more like uh, you are uh, in the mainstream of uh, the, uh, the being an artist. In the mainstream, there is a mainstream. Why I feel is that there is a mainstream where you, we belong all. And then from the mainstream, you take your own uh, different arteries, yes. uh, mm -hmm. different roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then uh, these roots, you 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 are flowing. And mm -hmm. when you flow, you flow with an open eye, and open my eye as we come back to open my eye. Open and then when you open your mind, yeah, open mm -hmm. your mind, open mm -hmm. my eye, and uh, and then uh, flow in vision. Then the vision you see it. That's yes. I mean the main flow. Then in the main flow, you are, you you focus and then see other visions, and then you bring out images mm -hmm. in the brains, whereby you can see this is another. Uh, Gesicht yes. in yes. Deutsch and uh, face in mm -hmm. English, mm -hmm. uh, whereby you see it's more like an abstract uh, animal. Uh, with uh, this is the face, uh, and this is the nose, and this is the eye. This, the mouth eye, is yes. all mm -hmm. there. This is a vision that comes from the flowing vision. This uh, represents more like a, a, a sailing boat, mm -hmm. whereby mm -hmm. this is the sail, this. and then this uh, this is the boat, and then this is the sail that is pushing and. the. Uh, Flowing vision. Uh, practically uh, spoken, it's a, a multi-virtual sculpture, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more <laughs> yeah. in the development whereby when you develop, yeah. you see a lot, you see, but you try you to uh, filter and then bring out yeah. something that is yeah. real uh, good, mm -hmm. uh, the best out of the uh, the main things that you can absorb. So. For me, it's uh, the stone that speaks. Uh, when it speaks, it brings out what it wants. And it speaks to you, or you, do you speak with it? it uh, you have a conversation. Yeah, a conversation. You got a uh -huh. conversation between yeah. you and the sculpture, or you and the stone. When you, I usually work on uh, different stones, uh, or uh, different uh, sculptures on, on uh, one time. I, like, uh, I put up almost five stones, and then pertaining to which one is coming much stronger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's like a fashion show in one stone whereby you see images cropping up in the, uh, in the one in the, in the stone and then growing and cropping up and growing and then the strong one dominates the stone yes, I see. and then mm -hmm. when it dominates sometimes you can see it and sometimes mm -hmm. you cannot see it so you go there and then you try to work on it and ah, there's nothing oh I can see the sculpture but I cannot work so it's the block vision. Hmm. So I had to uh, wait and then go, go to the other one that is already finished yeah. and I start working from that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, more like uh, the, the, the conversation comes more when you work. It, it's the moment you work, it develops, it shows you yes. what it wants. It's like you are employed if, by the story. Yes, if, if work is, pro, is in progress, you, you can begin and 
uh, continue your conversation with, with yes. the reality and with the stone itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, it's more like it. Yes, and um, this, yeah. uh, this are three types of stone uh, are all the same. You said oh. that was opalite. Yeah, this is opalite, and then this is uh, springstone. Mm -hmm. uh, both of these are springstone. springstone. Uh, and then the springstone is the name that we gave to the stone uh, because of the uh, springing. Mm -hmm. of the punch and the hammer. When you uh, put a punch and then you try to hammer it, it springs back. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we call it the spring stone. So it's a very hard stone. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. uh, hard stone. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some of them, they, are dip they differ in the uh, whereby you get, yeah. where you get them. Some of them is uh, real hard and some of them are, they are medium hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's other soft ones which are, we call uh, the uh, uh, Tengenenge soft and serpentine, mm -hmm. which is a little bit uh, mm -hmm. much softer mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, opalite. Opalite yeah. is a little bit softer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this type of uh, serpentine is more with the metal. Yes. Yeah, and later on, you will show us how you managed to get it as smooth as it is now. Yeah, definitely. Yes. I will mm -hmm. definitely uh, present to you. This is much the natural surface. Yes. And this uh, is more with uh, uh, different colors, like brown. Uh, mm -hmm. More, it's more to the brown color. Uh, this is the uh, springstone, but it's more with the brown color. Yeah. It's different. Where, where you find it, where the quarry, where you find it, that's where it has got more deposit of uh, the brown color. But it's a uh, hard springstone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming to the other yes. uh, sculptures. My favorite sculpture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it uh, was more of a development mm -hmm. uh, into uh, trying to make the stone lighter and then uh, trying to uh, go more abstract, of which I hadn't had an, an idea of. Uh, of, of or how it looks or in here in, in Europe whereby a lot of people here they work much abstract. So I hadn't had an idea so I th thought no I should do something that is totally different from this Shona art. I really didn't want to uh, uh, put myself uh, in the shoes of mm -hmm. Shona art. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to see myself with yes. something new. Yeah. Totally new from uh, all the styles that I could see uh, as Shona art. So I started uh, with uh, uh, abstracts like uh, oil clit whereby we have the uh, clear lines and then, uh, then I was going to a school, uh, tried to go to a school which was uh, a little bit difficult for me uh, uh, with the uh, uh, mathematical uh, set uh, that had uh, triangles and everything so I tried to bring out the form from uh, oil clit. So this was much from a development from the uh, uh, old style of uh, block vision uh, and uh, open my eye, flowing vision, in flowing vision, then it came the abstract toy forms. So as to uh, going lighter or it's coming to uh, Pythagoras, Pythagoras, yeah, more <laughs> the theorem and uh, yeah, getting more light, getting more less volume uh, in the stone, but uh, getting it uh, a little bit more, much lighter uh, to in this abstract way. So I tried to make it plain, simple. And this was the uh, development from uh, mm. uh, uh, Euclid, Euclid to Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Uh -huh. And then mm. now from Pythagoras, yes. we came to, to. the uh, origamis. Mm -hmm. I call them origamis mm. because it's like a paper fold. Yes. yes. And it's a clear form. It's, yeah. A, yeah. it's an idea brought into a stone yeah. or shown by a stone, I think. Uh, this is uh, like more... mathematics. Yeah, it's more like uh, uh, when, when it, I get to the uh, Pythagoras, it's, the form came out. I worked on the form mm -hmm. and it came out. And I thought, oh, okay, Pythagoras theorem with the triangles. Yes. So uh, this is what I'm learning at school, so I must present it as uh, Pythagoras. Then uh, Heike came and said, uh, we, t we talked about mathematics and they said, oh, Pythagoras, and then we call it Pythagoras. So from there, that's when I started uh, going much lighter. The more you, you work on the uh, technique of uh, trying to make the stone fly uh -huh. or trying to yeah. fold the stone, mm -hmm. the more you go get much work from the stone. You look at it, it gives you the forms. It gives you the forms and it's a big challenge. So, But uh, a stone doesn't resist to be, uh, uh, to be a, f a flying stone? 
the sometimes it resists and uh, you can see uh, from making it a little bit light like this and then you get a lot of breakages mm -hmm. and some of the stones are of, uh, a result of breaking yeah uh, they uh, came from uh, like uh, the other ones that I'll show you later they are more like uh, this one had broken Mm -hmm. It was broken. It, it was a two-way piece which came from here. Oh, yes. The other spot it was mm -hmm. much from here, but uh, it broke. Mm -hmm. And then I had to uh, uh, make it in another different form. So it was another new development for me. And then the other part is another sculpture, and yeah. this other part is another sculpture. So by folding this stone, it's much, uh, for me, it's very interesting. I want to get more. I want to get more. I want to see more. And when it uh, when you experience the work, it gives you more the lines. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. get the more the lines, then you, you you try and follow it. When you try to follow them, then it's very much it makes you it makes you free inside. I, it makes me free when I'm uh, working on the stone. When sometimes you work on it and then you're tired, you have to stop yeah. and then you leave it. <laughs> and then tomorrow it makes you eager to work on it. Mm -hmm. So it's more the stone that. Uh, gives you what it wants. And, and it happens to you that you uh, are awake in the morning and then you know what you will do with Some, the stone which you had left the night before? Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's like that, but uh, it's difficult. When uh -huh. you wake up and then you go there, then the feeling is totally different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's totally different. <laughs> Yesterday you were waking we were mm, very much mm. in a good mood working, yeah. and then the next morning, oh. it's out. Then you go there, you try to... Uh, Look at the sun, it's not there, there's another one coming. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you try to do something, because you need to work. Uh, and then you try to do something that is totally different from yes. uh, what you were doing mm -hmm. the previous day. So it's uh, amazing uh, sometimes uh, to talk about it and then you, you need to uh, really experience it. And then you have the feeling mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. So yeah. this is the development. Uh, mm -hmm. from and it's very amazing to look at the development of those uh, Six sculptures from the um, open, uh, open, open, open eye, open head. eye to uh, the origami. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's uh, for me, it's fantastic what you can do with a stone yeah. and to develop your own style. That is very, very interesting. To yeah, me. I'm looking for what uh, not to be named uh, is under somebody <laughs> or some no, under no. Uh, a name that can be said. No, he's he's doing like a. Uh, 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 the uh, former art artist, like no, he's doing like Picasso. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that looks like a Picasso. No, I want to like, try. It, it looks to like have Ita my Nava. own <laughs> name. Like that is. It looks like that's. I think that is a new one. That yeah. is Itai. Yes. Yeah, yes. That is the uh, point that I'm looking forward yeah. to. So I think with this development, it shows much that I am mm. yearning for more. Yeah. If the stones can uh, speak to me more, yeah. then I think there's a lot of that is going to happen, and yeah. there's a lot that is going to come out. And then there's a lot that is going to be uh, shown. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am uh, looking forward uh, to uh, experience much of new sculptures, of which uh, I can see uh, from from this stage. Where do I go? I think it's further. Okay. Is, yeah. Let us uh, have a look at the others over yeah. there. Yeah. M much more subtle than than those uh, three. Yeah. Yeah. This is more uh, <laughs> the origami pieces in in the house. Yes. These. Oh yeah. These origami pieces you made in which year? Uh, these origami pieces, uh, I started them in 2000 uh, and uh, I think it was 2006. Mm -hmm. That's when I started much uh, uh, with uh, the, the development of origami. But already I had already started, I think it was 2005. That's when I started mm -hmm. the first one uh, out of a broken piece. Yes. It was much, uh, I started with a piece that I called Nothing. It was uh, a foam that was uh, real uh, round uh, in, in, in shape and then very much thin. So uh, by trying to present it in the house and it fell down and then it broke like a porcelain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the, uh, the origami uh, uh, folding paper like uh, foam started. Then I tried to work on another one uh, that I had uh, joined with a, a big bass from stone. Then the bass broke and then uh, I was left with the folded uh, like paper uh, mm -hmm. or stone. Mm -hmm. yes, like and then I said, no, no maybe oh, that, this is nothing. Then Heike came and said, oh, you've done a new piece. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That, uh, that is now more like a, an origami fold. Then I said, okay, ah, <laughs> so it's a, it's a piece. Then we tried to present it, and it, it, I saw it was good. And then, then that's when the line started showing in the stone. Then I could try and fold and then mm-hmm. make a chiffon was yes. uh, the later stage. And then here the flower was the another stage from the uh, uh, nothing. From nothing, then I the uh, brown formed or the curved formed from uh, the flower. Then mm-hmm. later on, uh, the origami folded like paper. So I I've learned that this this bec- uh, those pieces became uh, se- uh, several pieces because uh, the one together didn't work. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, usually. And, and so it's a little bit experimental to to find these uh, forms. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it was uh, more like in in, in a, an experiment way, but uh, later on, and it started developing t- into me like that. Ah, mm-hmm. there is something that is in that the stone, your... uh, and then there, there is more to this. Mm-hmm. Let me just uh, try and work in this line. Yes. So mm-hmm. it was a new line that yeah. came, mm-hmm. and then I that I was a, a leap from the other line of herds, mm-hmm. the other line of uh, other different forms, plain uh, forms. Then this one. Really, the stone wanted to fly. Yes. So, so this was the quality step you took. Yeah, this yeah. is the quality <laughs> step that I took, and then always you come to filter mm-hmm. uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, this, uh, the lines that you can see from uh, the stones, and then it, I imagined uh, when I work on uh, the chiffon, I imagined throwing the dust from. Uh, the wet uh, yeah. uh, uh, dust from uh, the stone, then you throw it away. Then the forms that comes, like a person who's smoking a cigarette, when he uh, blows, he doesn't blow much of the air, he just lets the, the smoke comes out of the mouth, it forms it different, different forms. forms yes. So mm. from that, you, you freeze the moment mm-hmm. and then you bring mm-hmm. it much uh, 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 to reality and then you try to see it from the stone. And then you could see that, no, the stone can follow that as well, but more is what comes from the shape of the stone. And the shape of the stone can give you more, and then the stone can give you more from what it is. So I started working in the stone and the forms were flowing from the stone. So, yeah. Uh, the first stage that uh, uh, when working on the sculpture is the punch and the hammer. Uh, the punch and hammer, the punch is the uh, one that makes uh, open up the stones. Uh, it opens up the stone in this way. Uh, thereby you'll be chipping the unwanted parts. Or the uh, worked out parts. To form the, uh, the shape that you... Is coming from the stone or the shape that you can see from the stone. So we use the hammer, it's more with uh, manual tools that we use. Uh, modern tools, uh, we hadn't had, uh, I haven't uh, had started with modern tools mm-hmm. because I really want to work with uh, manual tools to fill the stone, to be close to the stone. This is more what I like. So we usually have got some uh, safety glasses, but for now it's just uh, demonstration and then when I work I know where these stones are going to so this is the first stage you can see now the surface is Mm -hmm. clear just planning planning the surface the hammer and miles so this is the first process Some can start with working on the stand for the stone to stand such that you can see it uh, on an uh, upright pole point. But I am just removing this part such that you can see. Then the second stage you go with the tan hammer. The tan hammer is to clear. Uh, the marks that has been put by the uh, that has been uh, made by the uh, punch. The sun hammer clears it all. Like now, I can take it a little bit. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so that you can see. You 
This is the work of the sun hammer. To clear out punch marks. Mm -hmm. Or even to make it relatively uh, flat. So as you can see, just working on this stone, you can see different colors of the stone coming up. Which type of stone is it? Uh, this is a stone that I, I got from a friend from here, uh, and then it's, uh, 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 it's it's more like a sandstone, mm -hmm. and then it's got lines in it on, that shows much different colors of oxidation in the stone. And it's, and it's, it's a medium hard stone, and it's more hard than the Speckstein but softer than the other uh, spring stones. Yes. Then from there, I, we go to the chi chisel. The chisel makes it flat. If you want to make the surface flat or you want to make the surface smoother, you make much smoother from the from the sun hammer. The marks that were put by the sun hammer is now uh, put away by the Chisel. Oh. Now you can see the colors in the stone so yes. clear. Very clear. Because mm -hmm. the chisel is making it much more finer. Just a small surface. Yeah. Oh. There. From the uh, chisel, then we go to the rough. Rasper, the filer. Uh, in German they say filer. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. Then we go to the rough filer. The rough filer makes it even smoother from the chisel. We go to another finer one. This is a little bit rough. Go to a finer one that makes it even smoother. Now it's even smooth. And then from there, that's when we start with the sand peppers or mm -hmm. the uh, schmega papilla or, or fine sand peppers. Yeah, this last time I worked yeah. on this one, then this time I, I will show it uh, for, mm -hmm. for the finishing mm -hmm. because this one doesn't show the color. Then you do it with the same paper. The more same paper is more to make the stuff is clean and flat. As you can see, this one is a, it is a different type of stone, and it's always quick from the sandpaper. And we go to the finer ones, and we can do it with water. With water, yes. Mm -hmm. Make it even much finer. You dip the sandpaper in the water, and then I think you can see the colors of the stone are coming much. More to see and then more for polishing. I will show you from the uh, spring stone. This is a different stone from this one. So the spring stone I show you and how I can polish it uh, a little one. This one here so that you can see it. And I did do something on the spring stone with the filer. 
is already a wet tone, so I just do it with a file just to quicken up. This is a little bit small, so that's right for, for to see. So I wake it so fast. Finer with the uh, send, uh, with the filer. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we go to the water, send uh, make a papier or send paper, and try to make it much smoother for polishing. I think this is more the most interesting uh, process where the finishing starts. You really get to do it immaculate, such that you don't have any lines that are showing from the previous scent paper. So as you can see, it's from the uh, tan hammer. These marks are made by the tan hammer mm -hmm. or the uh, uh, chest hammer, we call it. A chest hammer, from the chest hammer, uh, the chisel, chisel marks. These are the chisel marks. And from the chisel marks, this is the filer. This is the filer marks. From the filer marks, uh, then we go to the scent paper, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, the polishing. And then we go on with uh, another sandpaper up to the finest. You can go from uh, 80, 120, uh, and uh, 120, 220, 320, 420, or 400. Then from 400, 600, 800, and sometimes 1,000. If you want it to look much finer depending on the which grit you want. Mm -hmm. So right here I've, I'm working with a, a 400 so that you can obtain a polish. Get another one. Let's see. It's the same. Now get a 600. Do we have better finish? Now it's getting more smoother. As you can see, it's much finer. Yeah. And uh, it's getting much dark in color. That's the way it looks before. Yeah. Now we go to a thousand. Yeah, a thousand two hundred. I use a thousand two hundred. It's more to get it much clean, and the, you can feel the grit is no more. Yes, and finish with the sandpaper. Now we get a finished product. We get to leave it a little bit so that you can see it when it's dry. Okay. And it's much dry. And then we proceed from this point. We are now proceeding to a uh, uh, making the stone, polishing the stone. This looks much uh, like the sculptures that I had uh, uh, finished. Usually I finish my sculptures without putting the wax uh, to obtain a better color. For me, it's, it's a good color. It's a good, 
so without good. wax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this now this time I want to uh, demonstrate uh, how it looks. At, uh, you get the stone uh, to look shiny and uh, dark in color, uh, especially the spring stone or the seven time. Uh, from this point, I'm going to uh, use a uh, Brunzen burner to heat the stone, such that the, uh, the stone uh, gets uh, heat in it or, or accumulates heat in it, such that uh, when you put the wax on, it is absorbed inside the uh, uh, the stone. The to, stone is open. Or stone is open to mm -hmm. absorb the the wax in, and then it's a long uh, the time uh, staying in the stone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, shall we go get a minute and I check the. Wouldn't be a sorry okay. for us. <laughs> yeah. So this is the wax that we use to polish this stone. For the copper wax, it's a clear wax. As you can see, it's much clear. It's like Bona wax. Here in Deutsch, uh, we, we've got the Bona wax or uh, antique wax. So I use I uh, took some with me uh, from the cobra wax. Pencil brush. And here we get some bad soil. Got to turn up the <laughs> our fire, um, our matches here is not so working. Yes, we got it one working. And then, uh, we heat now, heating the stone with a uh, fire. You can see the difference in the two surfaces here. This is the wet surface and then this is more with the, the chisel mark and wet uh, without uh, polish. This is more with polish. Polish surface to, and cleared but not waxed. It looks grey in colour and then you can see the uh, colours of the stone much better. Uh, than with polish. For me, it's much better like this than with the polish. And now this stone is uh, uh, has got heat. And then this is the finishing. Find wax. You can see the stone is hot and then it's, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a strong smell of uh, the wax. <laughs> <laughs> the wax has got a strong smell. And then here when you try to polish this, it's totally different from this part, which is got heat. Then, like this, then you wait for a moment, uh, uh, for a while, so that the stone can uh, uh, come cool. And then from when the stone is cools down, then you uh, shine yeah. with mm -hmm. a, uh, the cloth mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. make it uh, look so shine. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that one. Is ready. What? Here. Just put it in water so that it can speak to, to shine. And you can present it. To keep the hope to show the shining. And you can see that's how we obtain this uh, shiny color from the stone. And now it's it's from this uh, when it cools down like this, and then uh, you shine it with a cloth, then it obtains a permanent shine. Uh, of which you can uh, do it after winter or year after winter you can just apply a little bit of wax on top then mm -hmm. you shine it goes back to yeah, yeah. normal uh, uh, shine.
This is the processes that we use to uh, uh, obtain uh, uh, or to uh, work on the stone uh, with the manual tools and yeah, to obtain the clear and smooth uh, surfaces yes. that mm -hmm. you can see in all of, our, all mm -hmm. of the sculptures. Yeah. So I think that's all. Yes, it was very interesting. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you last weekend you had a, a real good workshop here. Can you tell us about something about that? The, I had a real nice uh, uh, group uh, uh, which we did a workshop together, and it was uh, more fun, uh, and uh, it was a real excellent exhibition, uh, excellent workshop, whereby uh, we had almost about we were about six of us in the workshop, and then everyone managed to. Uh, uh, bring out a sculpture at the end of the day and it was wonderful because we we used uh, s uh, small stones and then uh, small hammers such that uh, those who cannot lift big hammers could work on the, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the stone and it was much and it was more with a special time so they uh, discovered a lot of colors uh, discovered that now this is something that is very interesting uh, interesting to work in the uh, in the stone and it's more uh, fun, and it's more uh, uh, you bring out what you like. Because usually uh, it's not uh, something that you have to teach people what you uh, what you can see or, uh, or or give them what you see. But they should bring out what they like. So it was amazing. I had to give them the technique on how to uh, work on the stone, and they had to bring out what they wanted from the stone. And it did. And it did work, the conversation between amateurs and the stones. Yeah, yeah. It, did, did, do, it did work. Uh, some, they uh, take the idea from the uh, head into the mm -hmm. stone. They say, ah, I want to make something like this. I want to make a, a head. I want to make a, a... Then I help them to bring out with their feeling. Mm -hmm. So it uh, really uh, was a, an interesting uh, workshop yes. uh, on, over this weekend. And you will, and you will uh, have another one next weekend, if it's possible. Uh, definitely, they are requesting for another one. Uh, three of the uh, uh, students that were in this workshop are uh, requested to come again, and then there are more uh, who are much interested now. To uh, I think we will be more than uh, almost about ten us, ten of us, uh, coming to the workshop uh, since the first first one. And then there's more requests that for another workshop. Maybe I will do it for the uh, second, third time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are yeah. satisfied by doing this uh, uh, workshop like this. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it much because you uh, interact with different people. You mm -hmm. interact with uh, different people from a uh, different perspective and see new things coming out from what they want. Yeah. Oh no. Einen Moment, wir machen gerade ein Interview. Ja, nee, ich rufe gleich zurück, ne? Du <lacht> yeah. yes, yes. Ist es reingegangen in, noch in die... Oder läuft es jetzt weiter? Das läuft noch, Ach, so, ich würde okay. ganz gerne das letzte noch... Uh, the, the last, uh, weil da hat so nämlich so der Ton vom uh, Handy okay. dieses... Okay. Ah, ja. okay. Okay. Yeah. Sound problem. So, Sound we, begin, problem. we begin with uh, uh, your remark on uh, being... Uh, you liked it. Yeah, I liked it uh, so well and uh, it was it's something that makes you interact with other new, uh, new people and uh, uh, it's nice to see their op own opinion, to hear what they say. Was it's when you come to a country, then more you need, need to see and then you need to hear from other people, or you need to experience uh, life in that country and then mm -hmm. uh, how they live. So it's more like you are shown how they behave and uh, how they live, yes. and then it's you uh, you learn a lot mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, others. Uh, yeah. And During you workshop. did workshops like the, these uh, two in, in uh, Zimbabwe? Yes, uh, we've done a lot of uh, workshops with uh, other artists and then uh, really uh, they are big, bigger ones and uh, with uh, Springston with artists and then but with students I think uh, we had uh, one that we have done with students at a school that is in Rio Tinto and uh, we are looking forward uh, to do more uh, mm -hmm. like uh, with another school that is uh, more in the Midlands mm -hmm. or the central uh, of Zimbabwe there's another country uh, there's another school sorry 
that is uh, looking forward to have another workshop over there. Mm -hmm. So is to uh, make them learn and uh, show them there's another possibility where art is something that is uh, more of like a, 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 a something that can give you life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that leads us to our next, maybe also our last question. Uh, can you um, outline a little bit uh, the situation of modern arts in Zimbabwe actually at, at this time? Yeah, it's uh, a little bit difficult uh, for the uh, uh, to say uh, uh, the point of, of modern art, uh, where it is coming from. Because usually uh, a lot of artists are influenced by the uh, European uh, type of art. And uh, that's where it is developing from. But the forms that are coming from the uh, artists of, uh, towards the modern art is that uh, they create something that is totally different from uh, what they see. You know, when somebody tries to copy and then doesn't do it the right way, and it's usually uh, not so good. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are some which are really uh, developing to a better uh, stage, or like uh, uh, what I do. I, for instance, I just give an example. Maybe it's, it's some you can see somewhere, but. Uh, I really want to present something that is totally different from what you can see in the books. Yeah, there is always uh, somebody who have done it, but uh, I want to do it my own way, uh, in the original way. So it's more uh, influential uh, from the uh, European art is coming. But uh, others who are really uh, rooted in the Shona art, they are coming with another different route mm -hmm. of uh, uh, modern art. And uh, installations and then uh, developing or found objects are uh, really coming from another perspective. And there is great uh, improvement. But in terms of uh, the uh, market, it's a difficulty to get the market. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can uh, do the sculptures or you can uh, make a sculptures just for presentation mm -hmm. and to show that there's new works that are coming. But uh, uh, the market. Is more does not exist. Doesn't that doesn't mm -hmm. exist in mm -hmm. uh, in our country? Mm -hmm. Yeah, more in the embassies uh, yes. whereby they are from Europe mm -hmm. and uh, yeah America mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, Asia. Yeah, they yeah there are people who appreciate they can that they can see through it, but uh, with I think more teaching from uh, uh, art schools, it's developing. I think we are in era, era that are uh, making something happening or uh, making a change into the uh, art scene in uh, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe uh, modern art also can show the Europeans what me what it means to, to speak about modern Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, mm -hmm. I think it's we are coming up with a, a <laughs> I think a have that statement whereby we are show we try to show up that we there is something that is called art. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. It's not only the root of uh, the Shona uh, art, whereby you, everyone puts it in another term, like the Shona art. But from the Shona art, you can derive to have uh, really uh, 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 an international uh, 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 standard uh, art, mm -hmm. whereby you can uh, uh, take it to the books. Or uh, Right now, it's difficult to exhibit or to have a, a, a sculpture or, or an art form into a museum from the uh, from uh, Zimbabwe. Well, we I haven't had much of it, but uh, you just see it from the Shona art. But to have uh, a, a stage or a, a position whereby you said, no, he's, he's an artist, or you are known as an artist who has got uh, real art that can sell, that can have, have that they've got uh, an account for, mm -hmm. uh, that has got a history for, uh, it's difficult. It's really difficult to have something like that, to be notified in the uh, uh, international uh, standards. Uh, they say, you know, it's, uh, when you present the art, they say uh, it's more uh, craft. Mm -hmm. But if you look into it, uh, if you look at the sculptures that are present, uh, can you say, is it craft? Or? No, it's, it's not, it's art. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is... This is the point where I am uh, trying, to ex or, um, to, trying to express that, no, we we got uh, the feeling of being artists. Mm -hmm. well, we, uh, we, we got something that we call art. But, but to, we wanted to be notified. We wanted to be uh, 
to have a representative, uh, a representative uh, in, uh, to represent us uh, as original Zimbabweans and then coming up with new modern uh, art. So, so I think it's more like a cry that I'm doing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to no. be notified and or mm. to be to be. Uh, yes. uh, Maybe it's a little contribution of, from our side to, uh, to do this little film for you. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you can show it uh, over there uh, in, in Harare or in any other place. Yeah. And so that they can notify that you are notified here in Europe, especially yeah. in Jaya. Yeah, that is <laughs> real. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy uh, to uh, have this presentation. I am. Uh, I think I'm over this guy that it can show in, mm. in the YouTube. I give them the address that they can see, and I give them the CD that to see to learn. But uh, here it's appreciated. But sometimes within ourselves we, we bring down ourselves, not knowing what we've got. Uh, it's, uh, so you've got to uh, show it. You've got to uh, present it for people to uh, really uh, not know, know and then uh, uh, have the sense of this type of art, I think. This is more, like I say, mm -hmm. this is, yeah. Thank you. It's a, it was very uh, impressive and very yeah. moving uh, end of our interview. Thank you so much. Welcome <laughs> very much, yeah. yeah. Okay.